That sauce is home to many secrets. Some of them are quite apparent, but some of them are tucked away beneath layers of gameplay or lore. Today, in this special video, I want to share some of the game's secrets with everyone, and hopefully after discussing some of the lesser-known gameplay mechanics, lore, and other easter eggs, it will enlighten you to how much content is actually condensed into this small indie game. Now, I'm sure there are some lore mongers and experts in the community that will know some secrets that's not covered in this video. This video exists purely for the sake of entertainment and goes over what I personally know about the game. So a couple of disclaimers before I start is that I will not be including glitches or bugs that are already patched today. If we went over every glitch the game has had in existence, this video will be over an hour long. I will give mention to some very noticeable cases, but any glitches I mention would have to be applicable even today. And second, I'm only counting details that are added to the game after its initial release, so post patch 1.0. Finally, if there are any spoilers to the lore of Dead Cells, I will give a heads up and let people skip forward if you don't wish to be spoiled. Alright, with that out of the way, let's begin. Starting off with Level 1. These game features are pretty straightforward, you've probably heard most of it, if not all of these if you play the game a decent bit. Boss Cells, or BC, is the game's difficulty modifier. You just have to beat the game once, and then you'll unlock the VAT in the beginning of the game that lets you modify the run. The more boss cells you have, the harder the game becomes. Exponential Scaling If you watched any beginner's guide on the game, like mine, you would learn that the damage you get from having whatever amount of scrolls actually scale exponentially. Every time you pick up a scroll, the damage it adds is not a flat boost every time, but rather the increase per stat gets higher and higher the more stats you have so always push one stat as high as possible. This is actually a common complaint about the game, since if you know exponential scaling, there's no reason to pick any other color except for the one you main, which kind of makes the choice between stats whenever you pick up a scroll pointless. Pushing one stat is just the objectively best way to maximize damage. Challenge Rifts These hidden parkour levels are found whenever you interact with one of these glowing runes on the floor. They have a base 20% chance to spawn in a biome, and you'll likely miss one every now and then, since they're pretty hard to notice. I miss them too sometimes. Anyways, going into one will get you an amulet and an additional scroll. Mutations Reset I kind of forget this feature is in the game too sometimes, but on the mutation selection screen, you can actually pay some gold to reset your mutations. The fee gets doubled every time, but it's not like you'll need more than 4 resets anyways. It's a good way to ensure that your mutations are better suited against endgame bosses if you previously had mutations that are only effective in biomes. Chances are you probably already know this, but I just want to spread some awareness to newcomers that you can do this. Legendary Items Ever since the Legendary rework, most items in the game will have a unique affix that's exclusive to their Legendary variant. Usually, this will change the playstyle of said weapon in a significant way. So there's much more incentive to try out new Legendary weapons than before. There are a couple ways to get Legendary items. Some ways I know of are flawlessing a boss, going into the Fractured Shrines, or finding them randomly dropped from enemies. Rally Mechanic, also known as the Recovery Mechanic, Taken straight from Bloodborne, the rally mechanic allows you to heal some of your lost health if you act quickly after getting hit. Upon taking damage, an orange bar will gradually tick down to your decreased health total. This is known as recovery points. However, if you land any attacks with your weapon before the orange bar disappears, you can actually recover some HP that you lost. This is the game's way of rewarding you for playing aggressively, and almost essential to learn to do when playing higher difficulties, as health just becomes increasingly scarce. Scroll Fragments On 3 boss cells and up, you'll find these small rock-like pieces of fragments lying around. Picking up 4 of them will get you a bonus scroll. Simple. The Bank's Mimic In the bank biome, there will be a hidden enemy waiting to ambush you in one of the shops. The Mimic will jump out at you, eating the item you just bought, and defeating it will drop two food items if appeared in the food shop, or a piece of gear that's slightly higher quality than what you paid for if it appeared in the weapon shop. Level 2 Things in Level 2 you probably know if you play the game a decent bit, it's stuff that lurks just beneath the surface of the game. There's quite a handful of secrets here, so hopefully some people will become more accustomed to the game because of these. The Just-in-Time Jump this is not a game mechanic that's exclusive to Dead Cells, but it's a quality of life change that makes movement in games feel more responsive. It's much better shown than it is explained, so let's just take a look. Notice this large gap of spikes. 
If I jumped right on the edge, I want to perform a single jump to reach the platform in the middle. Seems simple, right? Nothing out of the ordinary? Well, let's play that back, but in slow-mo this time. As you can see, right before I pressed the jump button, my character had already begun to fall off the edge before starting the jump. But the game gave me the jump anyways. The just-in-time jump makes it so that the game can read what the player wants in order to give them a better experience. You can use this to your advantage in parkour challenges, since now that by pressing jump slightly after than you would expect to take off, this is how you can clear those long spike jumps with relative ease. Wall climbing. This is a handy utility to have under your belt after you get the spider rune. You can actually scale up a single vertical surface without any height limit if you perform the wall climb. It can be done by climbing up a wall, and when the beheaded stops, quickly press the attack button, then the jump button again. When done quickly enough, this can be a useful trick to increase your mobility while also being convenient for getting out of sticky situations. Hang time. Most weapons will actually let you hang in the air for a brief moment if you press the attack button while in mid-air. This mainly functions on a case-by-case -case basis, but I find most ranged weapons will let you hang in the air for a while, but some weapons like the paraglyphs don't have any hang time at all. Food shops. A special type of shop that sells food items to heal yourself. However, while you probably come across some of these, food shops only appear in specific biomes. On 5 boss cells, the small food item is replaced by a cough medicine that replaces the malaise meter by 3 bars. Hunter's Grenade. You may have noticed that some blueprints in the game have drop rates lower than 5 star units in the gacha game, but the grenade and by similarity, the Hunter's Mirror are tools given to you to hunt down any blueprints you may be missing. Check whatever monsters is holding a blueprint, then pick up the grenade from the first biome, then find the monster that appeared in the mirror. Use the grenade on it, hurt it until it's low on health, then use the extractor to get the blueprint from it. This will guarantee the blueprint, even when it's listed to have very low drop rates by default. Assault Shield Dash A handy tech you can do with the Assault Shield. By quickly chaining together the shield button followed by the roll button, you can dash forward at an incredible speed. This can be used in speedruns or just as an enhanced assault shield if you really want to push foes backwards. Daily Challenge Despite being hidden in plain sight in the first chamber, is a feature that I forget 99% of the time. It is a special challenge that's mainly done to get 3 weapon blueprints in the game for completing the dailies a certain amount of times. These are the Swift Sword, Lacerating Aura, and the Meat Skewer. Guaranteed Curse Chests In specific biomes, there is a guaranteed curse chest that will spawn. Otherwise, the base chance for a curse chest to spawn is 10%, though this chance changes on certain biomes. Should the guaranteed chest spawn, the 10% spawn chance still applies, so it's possible for two curse chests to spawn in the same biome. Breach this refers to a hidden value tied to each weapon. The breach value determines how fast enemies will be stunned by your attacks. Slow weapons often have a high breach value, while fast or ranged weapons have low breach or none at all. This means it's much more likely that enemies will be stunned from being hit by a heavy weapon versus being hit from fast or ranged weapons. It's worth noting that some enemies have high resistance to breach, and some are immune altogether. DOT stands for Damage Over Time, a term a lot of other games use as well. Many weapons and items can apply them. Fire and Poison can stack the Burning and Poison DOT an unlimited amount of times, though they will wear off eventually. Shock can only be applied once at a time, and Bleed can have a maximum of 5 stacks. When it does, the target will suffer a huge instance of damage, and the stacks are reset. Burning Oil While we're on the topic of DOT, Burning Oil is a unique status effect that occurs whenever you apply fire to a target that's already covered in oil. So this status effect confused me for the longest time. But essentially, items that apply inflammable oil will douse anything with an oiled status effect. It's signified by a black water drop icon. This effect doesn't do anything by itself, but when ignited, blue flames will spew out, and the blue flames is known as burning oil, and weapons can roll affixes into bonus damage against enemies that are in burning oil. This used to be way less intuitive because the flammable oil and the burning oil status in the menu have the same color coding. So for new players, it may seem that they're pretty interchangeable, but luckily now they are marked with distinct icons on the left side showcasing that they are indeed different status effects. Level 3 
Now we're getting into some deeper territory. Old Shop System The shops originally did not offer items based on the color you select, but rather it was based on the type of weapons between melee, ranged, and skills. This may have been changed due to the fact that each of the three options have a diversely different amount of item pools. However, you can still use this old version of the shop via a setting in custom mode. The Queen Revives You In a somewhat hidden interaction in the Queen boss fight from the Queen in the C DLC, if you die while the Queen still has over 50% health remaining, she will revive you to full health while losing a small portion of her own HP. This can only happen once per fight and can be used strategically if you happen to be low on health. The Servant's Weapons In a lore room in Hythe Castle, there is a weapon rack that's missing three of its weapons. However, these weapons are actually the ones being used against you during the Servant's boss fight. You can unlock each of them by defeating the Servant holding the weapon as the last opponent in the boss fight. 5 BC Unlock In order to unlock the final boss cell, Instead of fighting Hand of the King, you have to fight the giant on 4 BC. After you defeat him, a unique cutscene will play out where he gives you the fifth boss cell. Homunculus Rune Can Stop Barrels A hidden interaction that you may not know about. In the distillery biome, you can detach your head and come in contact with a moving barrel. Doing so will make you be able to control the barrel with your head for a short amount of time. This can be used as a utility to blow open walls. Mama Tick Skip a hidden legitimate way to skip the Mama Tick fight. In the Morass of the Banished biome, right before the boss fight will lay an altar with a weird looking NPC beside it. If you're carrying Mushroom Boy, you can press the skill button and he will step on the altar and sacrifice itself, removing it from your inventory altogether. The NPC will be pleased and the boss arena will be empty, allowing you to walk right through to the next biome, but doing so will forfeit any rewards you would get from the fight. Strangely enough, doing so does not count as a flawless fight. Me Jealous is a special interaction if you're carrying the Serenade and another pet at the same time. Activating both pets in a transition area will trigger a unique cutscene where the Serenade states his disdain for the beheaded for having another pet in the party. Cocoon Parries Everything The Cocoon skill from the Fatal Falls DLC acts as a shield that occupies a skill slot instead of your weapons. You can parry normally with it as usual, but the Cocoon can actually parry virtually any attack in the game even attacks that normally cannot be parried by shields, some of which include the Slammer's Slam, the Bomber's Dive Attack, and the Queen's Reality Slices. Dual Binding An abandoned gimmick that you can do in the game by binding both of your weapon prompts to the same button. Doing so will cause both your weapons to attack in rapid succession, and was a brain-dead way to create some of the most busted builds in the game. This was patched out in an update. While you can still do this by going into your settings and activating the Alternate Binding Profile option, doing so will disable achievements. Moonflower Key These three keys are used to unlock the Acceptance Mutation. To find all three, you have to find the first one in Ramparts, then use the 3 BC Passage to fight Conjunctivius to access the Graveyard for the second one then the Forgotten Sepulchre for the last one, and finally using all three to open three locked doors in Hypey Castle. It's a lot of steps and you have to take a very specific path to get there. As the passage to Conjunctivius from Ramparts only opens on 3 BC, this mutation can only be unlocked from that boss cell level or higher. Moving on to level 4. Player Body Count You may have noticed this before, but in the transition area of each level, there is a pile of bodies that you can interact with in which the beheaded will comment how the bodies look just like him. The size of this pile of bodies is actually dependent on the amount of deaths you have on that save file. On a fresh save file, the pile is quite small, but as you keep playing the game, it gets bigger and bigger. I'm not sure what the cutoffs are for each pile size, but it is a cool detail that you may have missed. Old Malay System Before patch 2.1, the Malay system worked quite differently. Instead of increasing with time, the malaise bar will fill by one bar every time you took damage. If it filled up completely, it will reduce your health all the way down to 10%. Using a health pot would decrease it by 2 bars and the cough syrup in food shops would decrease it by 3. The problem was that the threat of the malaise mechanic was dependent on the color that you played on. On tactics, malaise was almost irrelevant since you would die in 2 or 3 hits anyways. On survival, malaise was a big threat since you could tank more hits. The mechanic was changed to the current system in version 2.1. The Philosopher's Stone is a very rare item pickup that can be dropped from enemies. Picking it up will grant you a whopping 75,000 gold. I've only seen this drop twice during 200 hours of playtime, and it's a lot better if you find it early game than late game. 
one-time use items, a bygone item design that's almost never used currently. There used to be a version of vampirism and tonic where they were one-time use. Vampirism would drop a health pickup every time an enemy was killed, and tonic would give you a couple seconds of a vulnerability while healing you a little. The problem was that people would just use these items when they found it and then just throw it away immediately after. However, there's actually one more single-use item in the game. The Explorer's Map can reveal the map of the current biome. You can pick it up in one of the paywalls in the prisoner's quarters. It's mostly a forgotten item since I really don't see how it can be helpful in any situations. Maybe someday it will get reworked. Dead Cells 1.0 The game has seen a lot of updates over the years. Instead of listing all the major changes, I'll list some of the important ones that I noticed. The time gaped whenever you finished a level fast enough would actually contain a scroll back in 1.0, which encouraged you to play faster because of exponential scaling. Gear actually gave you scrolls, so it wasn't really about what combinations of items worked better together, but rather which item gave more desirable scroll counts. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a curse chest on every level. Some mutations got removed in later updates, such as Fireworks Technician, which reduced the cooldown of grenades. Hand of the King Unique Dialogue this next couple terms will go over the lore of Dead Cells. If you haven't fully completed the game or you don't want to be spoiled, you can skip these next sections using the timestamp provided. Hand of the King has a unique piece of dialogue if you face him while wearing the King's outfit. You will comment how you are a sussy imposter for impersonating the King, then the fight will continue as usual. The Alchemist, a mysterious figure that's mentioned in lore rooms. It is said that he is studying the origins of the malaise and how to cure it. However, on 5 BC, it is revealed that he was the collector all this time, and the cells that you were collecting throughout the game were used to research the panacea, the medicine that will cure the malaise. The Beheaded's Identity The playable character is actually a homunculus version of the king that ruins the realm. After obtaining immortality, you were roaming the island senselessly murdering things in order to find the cure to the malaise all the while being the reason that the denizens of the island were treated inhumanely when the disease of the malaise first emerged. And finally, this brings us to the last level. These are things you probably didn't know about the game. Shopkeeper Unique Dialogue When speaking to the shopkeeper, you will get some generic responses. However, if you are on custom mode and lock out every possible item, the shop won't spawn anything and the shopkeeper will comment, I've got nothing to sell to you. Scram. Alternatively, if you're holding the Vorpan and the Tentacle in your inventory, when approaching the shopkeeper, they will say, Grill Tentacle. You, sir, are a man of great taste. Dual Stat Scroll Probability If you ever wondered if dual stat scroll RNG seems to be rigged against you, seemingly almost never having the color that you want, you're actually right. It is rigged against you. This is going to contain a lot of math, but I'll explain it in a way that makes sense. After consulting with some experts in the field, as well as confirmed by devs, but not very well known publicly, we know that the game assigns two variables to dual stat scrolls, good scroll and bad scroll. Good scroll is a dual stat scroll that contains your highest color, while bad scroll is one that does not. At base, in the beginning of each run, the chance for a good scroll to spawn is 1 out of 11 or about 9%. The chance for a bad scroll is 10 out of 11 or about 91%. Good scroll has a value of 10 and bad scroll has 100. Adding them together gets you 110, which is where 1 out of 11 and 10 over 11 comes from. This probability gets processed when entering the next biome, and the chances will apply to each dual stat scroll that can't spawn. The game processes that your highest stat is your main, so if you're maining brutality, a good scroll can be either brutality tactics, brutality survival split across the 9% chance at 4.5% of spawning each. Meanwhile, a bad scroll will be Tactic Survival, spawning at a rate of 91%. So at base, when entering the second biome, which has two dual stat scrolls, each scroll will have a 9% chance to spawn a good scroll. Heavily rigged, I know, but the chances of each type of scroll appearing actually changes whenever you find a good scroll or bad scroll. Whenever you pick up a bad scroll, the chances of a good scroll appearing increases by a flat 40. So if you found two bad scrolls in the second biome, good scrolls increases to a value of 90, up from 10, so the new values are now good scrolls with a value of 90 and bad scrolls with 100. This means in the next biome, the chances of a good scroll appearing is now 9 out of 19, or about 47%, and a bad scroll being 10 out of 19, 
about 53%. Now your odds of getting a favorable dual stat has increased a lot. However, the same also applies the other way around. Whenever you get a good scroll, the value of bad scroll gets multiplied by 3. So if you locked out in the second biome and found two good scrolls, the bad scroll value goes from 100 to 300 and then multiply again by 3, so 900. Meaning the chances of a good scroll spawning in the next biome will be 10 out of 910 or just over 1% and bad scroll being 900 out of 910. This means on average, you will see at least one good scroll every run if you have average luck, while the overwhelming majority of dual stack scrolls will be a bad scroll. Now you might be thinking, can you trick the game somehow into giving you more good scrolls? Well, actually, there is. On higher boss cell levels, you will get an amulet in Prisoner's Quarters that gives two stats. If you manage to find an amulet that gives two stats the same color that's not your main color, you will enter the second biome having three stats in both your main and another off color. Since the game has no way of determining which stat is the good scroll as neither is higher than the other, in this case it will count both your colors as your main. This means assuming that you went 3-3-1 when maining brutality, a good scroll will be a brutality tactic split spawning at a 9%. Meanwhile, a bad scroll can be either brutality survival or tactic survival, with rates split across 91% at around 45.5% each. This means two of the three combinations is favorable to us, since the chance of a dual stat scroll that's in our favor becomes about 54.5% for each scroll that spawns, which is quite an upgrade from 9%. This is a very small optimization trick that can be used to sometimes get higher than usual scroll counts in the early game, but it's a lot of hoops to jump through and the payoff is only marginally better. Now that you know the probability of dual stat scrolls, the system is indeed rigged against you. While there's still some internal information about the game that we are not sure of, what we are sure of is that if you go to the second biome with 3 stats in your main stat and 3 in another, your chances of getting a favorable dual stat scroll increases significantly, from a base of 9% to around 54.5%. If you're interested about learning this mechanic in detail, you can check out Speedy Cookie's document on this matter in the description. Just a warning though, there is a lot of math. Lightspeed Heal Now, I said I wouldn't talk about bugs that are no longer relevant, but this bug has somewhat of an odd history. The Lightspeed skill in the game allows you to dash twice in quick succession, so it has two different variants, one normal and a blue version that's for dashing back whenever it's used. However, the code for the blue variant probably wasn't thoroughly tested, because if you dash with the line speed, making the variant blue, and then re-rolling its affixes, there is a chance that you get an affix that states it will heal you for 15% of the health whenever used. This means you have infinite healing and is basically invincible. This bug will go on undetected for years and when posted as a bug online, people thought this photo was fake and that this bug couldn't possibly be real. Long story short, it was eventually brought to the attention of devs and was patched after. Turret Duplication This is also another weird bug that's actually still doable today. Using the emergency door, it's possible to duplicate turrets to an insane amount. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with every turret in the game, but it's still pretty hilarious to see. Weapon Techs Instead of listing all the known weapon techs, I decided to list them in one term since they're very widespread and only a very small portion of players will actually care about them. The term weapon tech is used to describe, at least in my words, an unintended way to use a weapon that can be used to make it more effective. A couple of known ones involve using the katana in order to use its dash attack way sooner than you're supposed to. There's probably a lot of weapon techs that exist, but ones that aren't even known yet. They're quirky ways to play certain weapons, but frankly, 99% of the player base probably won't care about learning them. Block stacking. It may seem that parrying is just a flat upgrade from blocking with shields, there's actually some hidden mechanics that activate whenever you block an attack as opposed to parrying. It's no secret that blocking and not parrying with a shield will still damage you, which can ruin your kill streak. And most people, including myself, consider it inferior to parrying. But did you know that by blocking, you will trigger the effects of every shield you have in your inventory? For example, if I have the Rampart, Punishment, and then Parry Shield in the backpack, whenever I block with Rampart, I will also activate the Punishment AoE and the Parry Shield Spray Attack. You can run a full shield setup where you block every attack with Rampart or Frontline Shield, then run some damage reduction with Vengeance slash Face Flask. 
in spite of Berserker mutations. You're pretty much unkillable from all the stacks of damage reduction. This has again been documented by Speedy Cookie, so you can check out the full details of this mechanic in the description if you are interested. So that wraps everything up. That's my Dead Cells Iceberg. Again, I'm sure there will be certain details I missed, but should that be the case, I'm sure everybody else would be happy to know all the secrets about Dead Cells in the comments. I need to reinstate that this iceberg is based off of what I personally know and is by no means an exhaustive list. By the way, if you're looking for in-depth info about the game in general, there is a brand new Dead Cells wiki under the site, deadcells.wiki.gg. So that's it for me today. Thank you all for tuning in to this special video, and have a good rest of the day.